So my name is Augustine Fuentes. I am a professor and chair of anthropology at the University of Notre Dame. Um, I study people and monkeys and try to figure out what makes us tick. Well, I got involved in biological anthropology because I'm really interested in, in everything about the human. What, what, what are we? Why do we do what we do? Why are we here? Um, and I didn't know that was actually a field. Uh, I was not a biological anthropologist. I didn't even know much about anthropology in college. Uh, then I took a class. I took a class in primate behavior uh, from someone who had become my mentor, Phyllis Dolanow. And I'm sitting there in the class, must have been day two, and she's up there talking and it hits me. This is a thing. I could actually do this. Here I am. So there's two things that I really love about my research. One is with my primatological research. I do something that's now called ethnoprimatology. It's looking at the world, not just of, say, monkeys in the jungle, but the big picture of conservation, ecology, humans, monkeys, elephants, whatever else is out there, trying to look at all the interfaces, but specifically the relationship between humans and other primates. Because we, as humans, shape the world, and I'm really interested in how other primates, like macaque monkeys, for example, they do okay. They're able to deal with the world that we've messed up in many ways. How, why, what's going on? That's what really interests me about the primatological stuff. On the other hand, I've been doing a lot lately on human nature, human evolution, trying to figure out how can we look into our deep past and really understand something about ourselves. And what's really amazing, I mean, it, it just always blows my mind, is that the more we look at the past, the more we realize how complicated, how amazing, and how distinctive humans are. Biological anthropology is sort of a hybrid field. Uh, it, it takes a little bit of everything from all over the place. So one of the biggest challenges is how to manage that. How do we negotiate? How do we connect all these fields and make the science robust and yet make the inter integration really, really work? So I think the challenge for the future is how do we do more of what we're doing? How do we expand out and yet retain this idea that we're really interested in everything about the human? from a biological, from a social, from a genetic, from a chemical, from an ecological end, and meld all those things together. It's hard to do. It's a really difficult thing. Another problem with biological anthropology is that we're part of uh, a university landscape and a research landscape that is not open to everyone. There are blocks in our society, particularly in the United States, with getting access to higher education, with getting access and involved into research. And biological anthropology, because we're interested in human diversity and the human experience, we need to be out in front opening up our research and schools to a wide range of people. We need a lot more diversity in our discipline. That's a big challenge. So one of the things, if you look around these meetings, um, for the last 20 years or so that I've been coming to them, uh, they're not that diverse. They could be a lot better, but the last couple years it's getting better, and we've been working hard to make it better. So walking down the hallways, looking around, you should see a whole range of faces, a whole range of life experiences, and a whole range of individuals. That's our goal, because that makes this, the data, much better. Right, a little bit richer. Yeah, I mean, the more experience. diverse voices we have in our own discipline, the better we are at doing science. We've begun now uh, in the AAPA with an NSF-funded project called IDEAS. This is the integration of underrepresented minority scholars into biological anthropology. So we're bringing undergraduate and graduate students and combining them with faculty mentors uh, at the meetings to sort of demonstrate not just an openness and invite folks here, but to really mentor, to really work, and to really show that we value diverse voices, we need diverse voices. So by bringing people to the meetings, we think that's one of the first steps to connect them, to encourage them, and to open the doors to a more diverse biological anthropology.